Hello everyone, today's tutorial is going to be on installing the freeware of Kubuntu. Kubuntu operating system, kind of one of the basic ones that are just like Ubuntu, Edbuntu. Kubuntu uh, is one of my personal favorites. I seem to like this interface. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show two two tutorials on this and those two tutorials are going to be this first one's going to be how to set up Samba inside of Kubuntu and the next one's going to be and setting up the fog imaging server and as you'll see that pretty much both requirements are going to require you to do a little bit of updating to the OS and setting up but first let's go ahead and find out where it is on the web and I'm going to go ahead and open up Internet Explorer here and the site normally what I do is I search everything from pretty much from a Google site here so what I would do is I would type in it's spelled K-U-B-N-U Kubuntu and I am looking for 12.4 but I'm just gonna go straight to the website so I can show everybody how to download this operating system and in what you want it once as soon as you get on the website I currently wouldn't suggest that you use 12.10 uh, you want to use the more stable release although you could apply everything that I'm showing you how to do on this tutorial to the 12.10 but I have seen it to where it's become unstable in certain applications and especially if you're going to use it on a fog server I wouldn't use it at 12.10 okay so go ahead and click on the get Kubuntu and I want to go ahead and download Kubuntu and the one I want to do is I want to, I'm sorry, let me go back to that real quick. Here, I'll show you the two selections so you don't make the wrong one. Right here it says, or the latest release is going to be the 12.10. Okay, This one's supposed to be supported for, I believe it says, five years at this current time. So I would go with the one that's the 12.04 right now. And what I do is click on a regular download of it. And you know, just make sure that it says 12.4. And the one that I'm going to be using in the tutorial is going to be the 32 bit version. Um, I don't really see a whole lot of benefit in the 64 bit version at the current time, but I'm going to use the 32 bit one just due to reliability to almost everybody's machine out there, is why I'm running the 32 bit. So I've already downloaded my version of it already. No need to go there. And I'm going to show this tutorial in using it in VirtualBox. All right. So let's go ahead and bring that up here. And I'm going to create a new setting from a virtual box. I'm going to call this one Kubuntu. Whoops. There we go. Kubuntu server. Now, inside of VirtualBox, you want to go ahead and leave it as Ubuntu by itself. If you had to select a 64-bit version, it would say 64-bit at the end of it. But in this case, we're going to leave it in the 32-bit, which it doesn't have a label, which automatically means 32-bit. So I'm going to click Next on that. And I'm going to bump it up to about 124 megs of RAM in it. Now, it depends on how much RAM you have in your system. This current one I'm using, I have 16 gigs of RAM in it. So really, anything that's below 8 or a maximum of 8 is okay with this. I believe that's where it is right here, about 8 gigs of RAM. But in this case, if your machine only had 4 gigs of RAM in it, I'd probably leave it at 512 without an issue, okay? All right, so let's click Next on it. Click next again. Yes, I want to create a virtual drive now. Create. Next. Next. And I want to bump this up to about 118 gigs. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is so it gives me enough room to be able to store an image, plus be able to have the swap file in there. Most of the swap files on Unix operating systems are about are approximately about three times bigger than the RAM or at least two times bigger than the RAM so that means at least if I've got four gigs of RAM and it's going to be an eight gig swap file so you have to think about those kind of things whenever you're installing it on a home system things like that so whenever you change the size of the RAM in a Unix machine it doesn't adjust like it does in a Microsoft machine so you need to think ahead that you'll have enough space for it okay so I'm gonna leave it at 118 gigs and create and I have my first setup on it. There's a couple of settings I need to change in there because I need to connect to the internet and I need it to run, you know, without any trouble. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it as a bridged connection. So, oh, by the way, um, the version of 
a virtual box I'm using currently is the most current one which is 4.2.4 release um, 81684 you guys will see it right here to find out which one you're using open up your virtual box go to help and then go to about virtual box and this is the current one as of 11 11 2012 today's date all right let's so right click on it and go to settings and I'm gonna come down here to the network interface and I need to change this to bridged adapter okay and sometimes on these Ubuntu series sometimes it's better to disconnect the network cable from the network card so it doesn't try to do any updates and I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now and then I'll turn it back on once Ubuntu is finished installing so I'm gonna click right in here and I'm gonna go under the network interface adapter one and I'm gonna just click this little button here where it says cable connected I'm gonna uncheck it that way it doesn't have an internet connection while it's installing that way it makes sure that no updates come over and then I'm gonna go ahead and click on storage highlight the empty container under the CD-ROM and I go ahead and click the CD-ROM itself choose the virtual disk here and what I'm gonna do is let's go to my desktop here and I've actually stored mine under some desktop folders here and I believe it's under ISOs on mine as well. Mine will say Kubuntu 12.4 Desktop i386, standing for the 32 bit version. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'll click on that. Now I should be able to start it up. I'm going to go ahead and check these boxes because I don't like showing these screens every time I start up. All right, we can see that Kubuntu is booting. Hit enter on it and start it to install. All right. Now, once the screen comes up, I'm not going to try it. I want to go ahead and install it directly to the hard drive. The only way you can get it to install Samba and these other products, uh, Fog Server, is, is if it's installed to the drive and all of the dependencies and libraries have been updated on the system. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next on that. And I'm going to leave it as guided. The entire disk is fine. I'll click Next on that, or Install Now, sorry. And I'm going to select my Regent here. There it is, click next on it. And click continue again. These are kind of at this point it's kind of the default screens. Go ahead and give it a username of test on this one. Give it a password. Yeah, I guess that's a short enough name there. Test dash virtual box for computer name, that's fine. Let's click next on it. And believe it or not, that's roughly all, almost all there is to installing this OS. Um, the part that's going to be fun is configuring it to run Samba Server. And now, if you don't know what Samba Server is, Samba is to be able to connect to a Microsoft network or to another Unix machine. And I'm gonna, what I'm going to cover today is a basic setup to get that working. And then after we're done with that, I'm going to also show how to set up the FOG server on Kubuntu. FOG's imaging server. It stands for Free Open Ghosting Software. Kind of like the way Norton's Ghost works and those other things, but except this is an open source technology to be able to image and re-image computers, multiple computers at one time.
it looks like it's done. So let's go ahead and restart it and bring it back up again. You have to hit enter, just don't forget about that. When it comes up that screen, you actually do need to hit enter on the keyboard. Looks like Ubuntu is firing up, no problem. And it's decently quick, if I might add. Alright, it was test. And then let's log in. Now, what I, lastly, what I need to do is I need to go back inside my VirtualBox settings. If you notice right down here in the bottom, I don't know if you guys heard that sound, but that was Kubuntu booting. But I'm going to right click on the network and go to the network properties. And if you remember earlier on when I was under advanced, I had it disconnected. So I'm going to connect it now. And you notice down here when it has this little red box on here, we're waiting for it to connect to get to the internet. There it goes. Now, notice this is still isn't quite done yet. It's going to show the actual cable plugged into the slot down there when it's actually working. And sometimes when you get on the web, there it goes. It's got a little green check on it. You see that? It says now it's connected. And look at that. You see the plug right there in it? Now we want to confirm whether or not it's getting on the internet. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my internet. Whoops. Go to my favorites over here. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Kubuntu Start menu. Then I'm going to go down here where it says the web browser and open it up. And let's check out Yahoo just to make sure it's working. And it is. Very good. Everything's working good. All right, so I'm connected to the internet. No issues on that. And Kubuntu is set up. So let's go ahead and do an update on Kubuntu now. So I'm going to click on the the Kubuntu symbol here, which is like their start menu, and I want to type in T E R because that'll bring me up to the console. I want the console terminal console. Okay, you notice that they named it with a K. And so the same the rules apply here that I need to set this up with is I need to install everything as a root user. The dollar sign means that I'm only logged on as an ordinary user. So I've got two things that I can do. One is I can type in sudo su. And what will happen is I can enter my password and I will remain as administrator. I don't have to keep typing in sudo every time I want to install something. Some people may not like that. Some people are not used to it. Some people didn't even know about it. But I'm going to go ahead and just do it with the sudo by typing in exit. I'm going to get back out of it. You notice I'm back to the dollar sign prompt. And I'm just going to type in my commands with sudo. Okay. So first one's going to be sudo space apt get. And I'm going to type in update. First thing you need to do is you need to update the system to make sure it's current. And the second one that we're going to do is upgrade. And this one's definitely going to take longer. So we're going to do sudo apt-get upgrade. This one has a whole list of things that are going to be upgraded on it. want to answer yes to it. And let's go ahead and start that process. As you will see that this is pretty much going to be the situation that you're going to have to do on all these versions of Ubuntu. Even Backtrack, you need to go through and do the same setup as well. And I will show in a tutorial how to use that as well.
that's just about done here. Looks like it's got a few more updates. As I said, if you don't have a very fast machine, this update's going to take quite a while. I would say not more than 30 minutes on a slower machine, and not more than 10 minutes on a faster one. And it's finished. Um, it's asking to restart the system. <laughs> How about that? Unix operating system asking to be restarted, which is very not too common. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot it. Type in the word. Actually, type it first. You got to give it as a root command. So type in sudo reboot. Let's go ahead and reboot it like it's requesting. And there it goes. As you guys can see, it is rebooting. Just about there. All right. All right. It looks like we're booted back up again. And I just want to show you a couple of things about the way the Samba works in here. Now, there's a K. This is on <coughs> KDE desktop. <coughs> Excuse me. And what you want to take note of is that if you notice when you go to favorites, there's a file manager in here, and you can pretty much see the folders in here. So, say for example, I wanted to create in my documents folder, I'll create a new file. So to do that. I'll double left click on documents and then in this window here I'm going to right click on the mouse and create a folder so I'll call this one test vbox all right and you notice that it did create the folder no problem I'll right click on it and I'm coming down here to properties and you know it looks like I could set permissions up on it which would be only for the local machine and if you notice Samba is not installed you can click on this and it won't install correctly. It just it it has the last few times that I've tried it. So you have to manually load a couple of commands to get this to install. So I'm just showing you where it's at and what you're headed for. All right. So let's go ahead and close out of this and let's run one last more command. Actually, two commands in our terminal mode. So T E R again after clicking on the K D E symbol and it'll bring up my console terminal. And I've already prepared this before. I'll post this on the website as well so that you guys can set up. But the command I'm looking for right now to install the, the Samba and install it for the KDE is the following command, which I have. I believe you guys can see it right there. Yeah, I think you can still see it there. Yeah, we can. So I'm going to type in sudo space apt dash get space install. Samba and it's KDE network and it's oh files file no file sharing space LB Pam dash win bind space win BIND. Now, the reason why I picked this one to install it is it enables the features that are inside in Kubuntu, and it just it just works perfectly once it's done. And, and as you guys are going to see as well. So again, the command down here is app or sudo app get install space samba space kde network dash file sharing space lib pam dash winbind space winbind and I'll go ahead and hit enter on that and if everything works out okay it'll install and it looks like it's downloading the winbind and again if you're having trouble at this point 
maybe your bridge you don't have your network turned on a bridge adapter you don't have an internet connection an internet connection is going to be required to be able to make this work and it is done just that quick so now if I click on the KD symbol again and go back to the file manager as I showed you before we'll go back to our documents folder and then VBot whoops I don't want to click on it I need to go right click on it and go to properties and you'll see right here when I click on the share tab look we have a whole new menu in there so let's go ahead and try that let's make this work let's see if I can gain access from the Microsoft network when I first what I need to do is I need to find what my IP address is and to do that I'm gonna clear the screen here I type in IF CON FIG IF config and you'll notice that my IP address is right here which is 192.168.1.65 so let's go back to the screen here. Now I want to um, share with Samba this folder. And I can say yes, I want to allow guests. Um, read only is OK. If I wanted to take a file in there or whatever, I will just do this as a demonstration for read only. Let's click OK on it. And let's put something in the file there, like let's create a new document inside of it. Create new text file. That works. Let's edit it. Maybe you can see it in there. Open it up with their editor. All right, and we'll save it. All right, and let's go to the Microsoft machine here. Go ahead and move this down here so you can see this right here. Move everything down a little bit. So I'm going to go to start, and I'm going to type in backslash backslash 192.168. 1. Dot, I believe it was 65 was the IP address am I correct let's hit enter on it yeah maybe not was it yeah it was 65 there it goes came up and look at that there's the box that I shared double click on that folder and there's my text file that I saved right there if I click on that and open it um, let's tell it that it is a notepad file yeah, look at that. Hello, this is Asama Share, and this is Kubuntu set up on VirtualBox, downloaded from the Kubuntu site, set up to be able to to do file sharing over a Microsoft network. Now, the rest of it is all you have to do to be able to change the settings on that is to go back into that folder, go back to the file browser, and if you want to change it to where who has access and who doesn't is all you do is you right click on it go to properties go back to the sharing tab and you want to check who have if it's full control you want to give if it's full control under just my account name it's just how you want to set it up all right thank you very much for joining us and have fun setting that up and I'm and be sure to join us for setting up the fog server on Kaboom 2 as well thank you and have a good day give me lots of lots of feedback anything else that you guys need tutorials on let me know Bye-bye now.